Welcome to Sarika Science. And as you heard, we're talking about seafloor spreading. So we all know that Alfred Wegener was the guy who came up with that idea of continental drift. And nobody believed the poor guy um, until around um, World War, I think it was around World War II, Harry Hess then was able to use sonar equipment and he mapped the ocean floor. And previously people thought that it was kind of flat, but guess what? It wasn't. It had all sorts of ridges, all sorts of things happening down there, big trenches. Everything was kind of bumpy and gnarly. And by discovering this with this using sonar, they were able to start think, realizing that, hey, the plates are moving. The earth is changing. And so um, later on, after mapping the floor, they were able to look at the rocks and see that the ages of the rocks got older the farther away you got from something called mid-ocean ridges, which we're going to hear see in a second. And then, on top of that, in the 70s, they had more information where they started to learn about magnetic reversals. It's a magnetic reversal. So let's start off with the first part here about the older rocks um, being on the outside of a ridge and the younger rocks being in the middle. So what you're going to need here is a little ball of some Play-Doh. I know it's really tempting, but please don't eat your Play-Doh because then you would be just watching this and not having as much fun using your Play-Doh, and it's also weird. All right, so we've got our ball of Play-Doh. We're going to smush it down kind of flat, and that's going to represent our tectonic plate. Now, seafloor spreading happens at a divergent plate boundary, so you're going to need a handy-dandy cutting utensil, and this is a knife. Please be careful with knives. No running or poking anyone. All right, so we're going to cut our plate right here to represent the plate boundary. And the plate's going to pull apart because that's what happens at a divergent plate boundary. The plates move away from each other. And what happens here in the middle? Well, right in the middle, that's where there's a bunch of magma now exposed and it's less dense and it's hot and it's rising and it has some room to move. And so we're going to take another little piece here. If you don't have one made yet, go ahead and make one another piece of your Play-Doh to represent the magma that has arisen. And it hardens and it turns into new rock. And then over time, guess what? There's a divergent plate boundary and it moves apart again. And what happens in its place? More magma rises and more magma, let's see if we can make a nice little, there we go. More magma rises and it hardens and it turns into rock. We get new rock. So the newest rock is here and the oldest rock has been pushed to the outside. So again, more time passes. The plates diverge continually and it's going to, oh boy, this is where it gets a little tricky. <laughs> and do we have it? We do. The plates are going to diverge again and then we get more magma that's going to rise in the middle and it's going to harden into rock. Now, what's kind of cool about this is that we don't just get flat rock. This is where we get big mountain ranges um, called mid-ocean ridges. And we're just going to keep it like this for now because it makes it a little easier to see. Do you think that the bands of color are on the ocean floor? As beautiful as that would look, no, it doesn't happen that way. But what we're using this as is a model to represent the different plates and the new magma that has kind of, kind of gotten pushed to the outside. Here's an analogy. It's kind of sad, but if a family has a bunch of kids and a new baby comes in, the youngest one is in the middle and the older ones get pushed to the outside. So that's an easy way to kind of remember this, if not a little sad, unless maybe you are the baby and you get all the attention. So over here, you see how these two are purple on the other side of this yellow one? And these two are yellow next to the purple and these two are purple. These all represent how these are the same ages. And as scientists looked at this and started to realize that the, the seafloor spreading was happening, they saw that this was a certain age. And these two were also the same age, but older. These were even older in the same age. And these were even older in the same age. And the reason that this happens is again, because remember, the plate diverges, it gets kind of cut in half, and everything moves out. Oh, oh there we go, we lost some of Earth. A little crazy. Um, and so everything moves away, and then the newest magma will rise right here in the middle. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about the magnetic reversals, and I'm going to switch over to using some paper because it's a little bit easier to see. It's a magnetic reversal. So the other part of this is that we have this magnetic reversal. You may have seen that on our papers or heard about it. The magnetic reversal first goes back to the idea of the inside of the earth has all this liquid 
iron molten metal inside of the outer core and it's moving around and it too has convection currents and it's pretty consistent but it does get these kind of irregularities in sort of the movement of the material and scientists have done some modeling with this with computers and they found out that the normally we've got I'm gonna bring my little handy dandy compass here normally we've got it all where I don't know why this isn't lining up there we go we have all the particles of the earth as they start to harden are going to line up with our north and south and everything's moving inside the earth but we get these irregularities and sometimes that makes the pole of the earth the north pole is actually going to flip oops just once come back it's going to well it's kind of crazy but it just flips and so now instead of the compass showing north on our old north it shows the north as south. It doesn't mean that the whole earth flips upside down, but just the inside movement of the magma creates this different polarity is what it's called. And then after a while, I'll come back. It flips back and it repeats and repeats. Oh, not that crazy. Hopefully you get the idea that it flips the north and south poles flip based on what's going on inside of the earth and what happens is as this new magma rises up it hardens because it does have particles inside and so maybe this is where north is up here and it hardens all the little particles align this way and they aim kind of direct just like if you had iron filings but before that and this is usually they say it's usually about under 200,000 years before then, the North Pole had switched. And so that means that on these ones, because these are the same age, remember, these ones, all the little particles inside aligned that way. And so scientists can get samples of rock and see that the particles are aligned in a different direction than the ones next to it. Well, what do you think over here? Before that, North was back, oops, this way. And all the particles inside aligned back in the direction of where that new crust is and guess what same thing happened I can't really see it same thing happened over here that at a different point in time they aligned this direction and it's recorded in the rocks because they hardened into the magma hardened into new rocks and all the particles aligned that way and so what happens is if you were to take a compass and kind of slide it along the ocean floor, for example, you would be able to see that the particles align differently as you go across the banding. And the banding, again, remember, you can't see it, but the banding happens based on the age of the rock when they split and also with the magnetic reversals. So that is a little short thing about seafloor spreading and magnetic reversals and hopefully give you a better picture about how we use that evidence to learn more about seafloor spreading and evidence that the earth is indeed moving around. It's a magnetic reversal. <laughs>